Okay, so this is my submission for week seven. Um, just kind of going off the feedback received from Keelan on last week's and just areas to improve on. So it was basically just on my research methods again. Um, I looked into how this idea of the whole grower unit would fit into the actual junior cert wellbeing framework. And I found some uh, schemes of learning in the in the outline of the junior cycle for uh, well-being. So one of them was the student has the awareness, knowledge, skills, values and motivation to live sustainably. So this kind of incorporates into both the whole recycling aspect of this project and the composting of the fruit and vegetables and the actual growing of their own fruit and vegetables. Um, the student takes action to safeguard and promote his or her well-being, so in clean eating. Uh, the student is confident and competent a participant in physical activity and is motivated to be physically active. So again, as I said in previous submissions, um, one of the aims is to get students up and active and away from a whole computer screen, especially in while in, in schools. Um, the last one being the student understands the importance of food and diet and making healthy lifestyle choices. So this is basically, again, just you're growing your home, getting the students to grow their own fruits and vegetables and getting them out of the hole, living off so like, like vending machine snacks and etc. Uh, secondly, went on to the depth of soil that is needed for the produce. So I'm going to be aiming for shallow rooted vegetables with an average growing depth of 305 millimeters. So you can see that for an example, you have um, lettuce, broccoli, peas, corn, beans, broad bean, and then there's cabbage, garlic, cauliflower, strawberries will probably be a very good one to grow with students as they're just a nice, easy little snack, and spinach. And then another area that we looked into was the whole ergonomics of how actual gardeners work. So gardeners tend to kneel down when when working with the ground just for the ease of just for the ease of working being closer to the actual uh, work area however this can have bad consequences on their body including arthritis so I when I researched this I actually found that the whole idea of these raised platform beds is counteracting them actually working down on their knees there's no need to get an actual knee support and to keep them keep their body nice and dry so a possible way of overcoming this is through the raised beds which is, as you can see in my initial ideas, um, is what I'm going for. It's not on the ground, it's raised off. Making the work area, it's more comfortable height for the user and also great for growing small plots of vegetables and flowers. Keep pathway and weeds of your garden soil and prevent soil compaction, provide good drainage and serve as a barrier for pests such as slugs and snails. So you can actually determine what clay and what compost is actually in your, in your unit and ensure that there's no compaction and it's all nice and loose. Um, secondly, the effects of living in inner city can have on well-being. So one of the areas that Keelan addressed was not only just being in school and just living in, uh, in an urban area, but the actual living conditions. So children who have lived in a temporary accommodation for over a year are three times likely to have mental health problems, including depression, anxiety, and compared to their peers. So Temporary accommodation is very much associated with urban living conditions in this day and age. You can see in the Dublin's housing crisis and even in Kilkenny City where I'm, which would be the, where I'd done my teaching practice, you guys, I knew from just, you got the kind of feeling off students, what their home condition was like and how it just changed when they got to school. They were just so much more comfortable. So when in school, these students will be given the opportunity to live a clean, healthy lifestyle. My idea is aimed towards these types of students suffering from mental health issues trying to give them an opportunity for a positive mindset while in school. And I even seen this through the whole woodwork um, area. They just they were a different personality when they were in the woodwork classroom. Uh, secondly, I looked more into the ergonomics of a teenager. So in my previous upload, I had fixated on a 14-year-old, whereas I researched into the height of 12 to 18-year-olds. It generally stands at around 16, 1,650 millimetres, as you can see from the graph. Uh, in order for the ease of use, the ergonomics of the unit must suit the height of the user but then Keelan raised what about the whole inclusive the whole inclusivity of the unit so people in a wheelchair so as you can see from the above graphic um, students in wheelchairs can have a reach outwards of 1.14 metres or 1140 millimetres in order for this unit to be inclusive there must be an area for students in wheelchairs to be able to work and I've actually taken this in mind 
going forward looking at my um looking at my developed idea so as you can see i'll just show you quick you can see the dimensions needed for the unit so the tiered height as you can see compared to what my initial idea was of um just one big box raised up high my developed idea being a tiered height so that it's still at a comfortable height students aren't they're not bending down they're not on the ground working they're still raised beds but the tiered height offers students in wheelchairs to both work on the lower level and possibly at the higher level um as stated previously the average height of the secondary school student is 1600 millimeters tall so in order for ease of, ease of use the unit must be measured at 800 meters tall in height and then tier down the lower tier for those students who are in wheelchairs or even just shorter than average so as you can see the unit does fit into the uh, dimensions of the module so 450 millimeters by 310 millimeters which is fitting into the 450 by 450 and then the last area I looked into was the crafts cho chosen so um, there's already in the table there was a dovetail giant manufactured so I just I chose the dovetail giant because just keeping in line with what joints were already in it. And then as I'm going to have to put a board on the front of the piece, the dovetail joint will counteract the force pushing on that joint. And then veneering is the optimal craft to choose for an aesthetic finish, I believe, because I was looking at adding a laminated, a laminated handle, but it's actually, I'd only be doing it just for the sake of doing it. Um, veneering will give it an aesthetically pleasing finish, and you can associate it with maybe a mental health symbol or a flower or some form of vegetable so that's kind of where i'm at this week there you can just see my um design enlarged so they still have your compost area two growing areas the legs are actually the recycled bit from the second tier would be where the seat of the bench was and the top tier would be where the backboard was attached so i'm just using the opposite side of the legs of what i was originally planned okay that's it